It's the future of Air Force training, but is it a jet that's actually worth flying? Greetings, I'm John, this is Two Brothers RC, and this is the XFLY T7A 80mm. The Air Force is finally retiring its fleet of T-38s in favor of the new T-7A. It's partially Boeing, partially Saab, making the rear end of the plane at least half of the fighter jet of my people. Kinda makes you wonder if there's a manual at the Boeing factory to help figure out how to assemble this IKEA jet. Those crafty Swedes know how to make some nice looking fighter jets, and Boeing did a fantastic job making this one look unique and interesting. XFLY took this design and scaled it down to a very realistic looking jet with lots of gorgeous scale details. In terms of flying, it's pretty agile and it can be flown in the runway corridor at my airport with no problems at all. It does everything short of inverted high alpha. It does do high alpha, but I had to modify the jet significantly with new servos and modified flapper on hinges to make them move more. I'll cover that in a bit. Got it. Hobby King sent both the T7 to us and a Turnigy 5200 LiPo. This battery they sent held up well under several flights, but I preferred the lighter weight and the more aft center of gravity that I could achieve with SMC high voltage batteries. The Turnigy pack comes highly recommended if you want extra flight time without too much weight. The SMC 4400s are my personal recommendation if you want the best aerobatic performance while sacrificing only a little bit of flight time. But unfortunately, I do need to introduce you guys to John's rule of EDF jets. The cooler an electric jet sounds, the less thrust it produces. The same thing that gives it turbine-like sound quality is also responsible for it suffering a little in terms of overall thrust. I think it does sound amazing, doesn't it? It really does. All right, that does have a really good sound. Let's bring it in closer so you can hear it. And this is on the, the, the new Turnigy pack too. This is actually pretty good flying with this 5200 that's in there. Not having any problems with CG or anything. It's not as far back as I would want my center of gravity to be, but I can't complain. It actually flies pretty good with this back, back, pack, this pack. Now these are on the SMC 4400 packs, like that takeoff I just did. I don't want to say the Turnigy batteries don't live up to my expectations. They're fine. They're actually pretty good batteries. The SMCs just happen to be lighter, and I think 4400s are the sweet spot. Hobby King sent me a 52. It still works great for this plane, but the sweet spot for me is 4400. Honestly, I would say even with a little bit of weight in the tail, I think it would fly a lot better for what I want to do. Uh, I'd probably be able to get the, the servos to make it go into a Cobra, no problem but not every jet's gonna do that. This is about as good as a backflip gets, see? That's full stab throw, and it goes into a stall at the top. Still pretty forgiving. Not hard to fly at all. That was cool. What in the hell did I just do? That was awesome. I threw the rudder to the top left with full throttle. Let's do that again. <laughs> Hope the plane doesn't disintegrate. There we go. Woo. Uh, it's neat to know that it can do that. Let's do that again. Interesting. Uh, 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 uh. Come on, come on. There we go. Interesting effects you can get from full rudder deflection. Let's do that one more time. That's just rudder alone. Look at the roll you get out of rudder. Holy crap. Those are some powerful twin tails. And that is actually a feature that this jet shares with the F-18 from Freewing in that you can make it do insane rudder rolls. So be careful with it. Use a lot of Expo or barely move your stick, one of the two. It struggles a little with climbing, but pilots with good energy management skills can make it fly well in big box aerobatics. Let's see if it has the authority to Cobra now. 
with the center of gravity where it's at. All right, let's get her lined up, put her into a nice little cobra. Three, two, one. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. It does come to a stop. It's just not as dramatic as I want, but it does meet the definition of one, which is the plane pitches up violently without climbing much and comes to pretty much a dead stop. That's a crazy roll rate. Well, uh, <laughs> Those little stabs are insanely good. Let's see how, what the roll rate is without the stabilators. So it's an ailerons only right now. Oh, plenty of roll rate. So a lot of it's coming from the ailerons. But I'm gonna leave it on anyway, because it lets me to, or allows me to do cool stuff. Another issue that I ran into is that the retracts will bind on the nose gear door after takeoff. So let's have Flying John take over and explain here. I don't think I've heard a jet that sounds anything like this. This is incredible sounding. It sounds like a turbine jet but I think the gear aren't retracting all the way again, which is, seems to be a persistent issue with this jet. Hmm. So we're gonna turn it around. They do just kind of take a while too. Yeah, but they, oh, so I think the nose wheel's getting caught on the door. Oh. So let's go ahead and, I found out why the gear door isn't working correctly. It's not that it's not working correctly, it's that it's not programmed correctly. So the little uh, switch box in there that tells the gear doors to operate isn't working when you power the plane up with the gear already dropped. See? If it was powered, I wouldn't be able to do that. Same with these go gear doors here too, except they are more stiff because of the design of the linkage. See how they're like, zoom in right there, dear? See how they're they're at almost a 90 degree angle to each other, so they can't move. So there's nothing that'll allow that to move. But this arm right here, look inside of there. See how that can, that can move with just mechanical advantage? Now, follow me as I go ahead and throw the switch on the gear. Now listen to them. We'll wait for that to finish. <laughs> now that one of the pilots, Tesla, is not going crazy because one of his chickens pecked the car. Um, here we go. I'm going to throw the switch with my foot. I'm going to put it right here. Watch this. See how it goes out? Now I put it back. Now it's not moving. I almost guarantee that's the issue. I can't push this door anymore. It's stuck. So I'm almost guaranteeing that's the problem. We're going to take off with it real quick and find out. Bring it back over to us. Do I see gear? I don't see gear. I think I fixed it. That's the problem with the gear, guys. That is the problem with it. So the gear is being actuated by closed by air pressure alone. So the nose gear catches on it and then the entire gear hangs up and it doesn't work. Now we can focus on flying. There we go. Now I'm having fun. If you want to get that nose up and fly super slow, the T7 is capable of it, but you need to split the flapper on leads and set the jet up like my F16 80mm from E-Flight. <laughs> oh, that was a failed entry. Holy crap. Okay, I'm going to stand over here. Holy crap, I thought I was going to go into those trees. I thought so too. I thought we were going to have to bust out that chainsaw again. Yeah, that didn't happen. The setup guide is linked at the top right and in the description too. The same mixes apply here. You'll want a mix that makes the flapperons point up while you're pulling the elevator. This creates the necessary wing configuration to keep it from stalling out, so it'll start flying mostly on thrust. You steer with rudder, but the twin rudders in this jet are incredibly effective. We got it. Oh, I was yeah. in on that, were you? I could be more. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't quite know where to expect it to go. You thought it was going to crash, maybe? I didn't think it was going to crash, but I wanted to be prepared for the eventuality. But we did it. It is doable. Now we can get lower. It is able to be due. Here we go. Mix seems like it's doing the trick. All right, I think we proved that it can be done. The stock servos are fine for most pilots, but I put in AGFRC flapperon and stabilator servos for more speed and more throw for the final day of filming. You can see the speed differences on display here. 
check this out. To get this amount of throw, not only did I have to use B11 DLS servos from AGFRC, and it's a little windy, so hopefully I can talk over that and you can hear me loud enough. I also cut these hinge points just a little bit, and you can see where the points are, like right there. It started here, and then I cut back to there, and that allows them to move all the way up like this. And then with this elevator to flapper on mix, both flapper ons will pop up which is allowing it to fly in high alpha. Now we're gonna get really low with it, so if it crashes, well, that's just how it goes sometimes, but here at Two Brothers, we do stupid stuff, so you guys don't have to. The T7 usually recovers from high alpha easily, so let's look into why by showing its stall characteristics. Wing rocks like crazy, look at it go. So it won't do regular high alpha. And the fact that it wing rocks while you're trying to make it do that means that when it stalls, it's going to drop a wing. We should do stall testing. We're about to. Power off stall testing coming in. Three, two, one, using the clouds as a backdrop. Full stick back. Should drop a wing. Apparently it does not, it floats down, but it does tilt to the left or probably to the right a little bit. So it's pretty forgiving so far. Let's see what it does when it gets into an accelerated stall. Okay, we're gonna bring it forward a little bit. We're going to immediately start yanking it at us. There's a, a slight wing drop. Okay, it's pretty forgiving, not half bad. Before we move into the review section featuring our new objective scoring system, I wanted to cover landing and why this jet lands best with flapperons, but only a small notch of flaps. Let's try bringing it in with full flaps this time. Definitely lands better without the full flaps. So to do flapless landings, you need to bring the jet in with some throttle. Uh, that's the only way it's not gonna drop a wing on you when you come in or get all smushy and weird feeling. We're gonna try this next landing with less throttle for another touch and go and see what we can get with it. And if it crashes, well, I don't want it to, but I gotta test this stuff out for you guys. We're not just a flying circles channel. Okay. About quarter throttle this time instead of half. So it can be done. It is just a little more squirrely, so you're gonna wanna bring it in with a little bit more throttle. Last landing we're gonna do is with some flap, half flaps. I've tried full flaps, it's weird. Don't recommend it. I don't even know if I recommend flaps. It's a, it's a strange airframe. Flies good overall, but it has some weirdness to it. Half flaps coming in. We're gonna bank it in nice and tight. Bleed off some of that airspeed. Not a half bad landing. I was able to hold it off and bleed off enough airspeed so it flared properly that time around. That's the best one I've done so far. Due Air to breeze. the design of the jet, which is reminiscent of those big ass power lines you find in rural areas. It really, it really does give the appearance of a power transmission line. The jet is susceptible to butt scrapes and wing scrapes. So try to bleed off as much speed as you can before touching down and don't drop a wing. I know that's super useful advice, but what it comes down to is exactly that. Don't get so slow that one of the wings stalls before the other, otherwise you're going to scrape a wing. Scrape. Scrape. Hold that a flare a little bit toward the end, got me a couple scrapes. One stall scrape and then one butt scrape. Do you like me some butt scrapes? Yeah. Oh wait, you're filming that. <laughs> Much better approach that time. Got her to stop way earlier and no butt scrape. Butt scrape. Another butt scrape. That's three butt scrapes in one day. Do you like me some scrape butts? In this video, I'm debuting what I feel is a very objective scoring system. 
This one is designed for 80 and 90 mm jets. Other reviews of other different airplanes will cover aspects found commonly in that class of aircraft. Let's begin with the landing gear. The landing gear box does not initialize unless you pull the gear up and drop them quickly if the jet's gear were already extended when you plugged in the battery. This causes the nose gear door to be unpowered, which prevents the door from staying open under the aerodynamic forces that are exerted during takeoff. The door will close and jam the gear, and then the gear will stop retracting. This is a bad design decision by XFly. Going forward, we would like to see them use the same kind of landing gear controller that every other manufacturer uses. When the plane is powered up and the transmitter makes contact with the receiver, the doors should be powered. The hard plastic wheels are also a net negative, resulting in the T7A getting a 3 out of 5 here. Moving on to flight times, you can reasonably expect upwards of 3 to 4 minutes of flying, but you probably won't get 5 minutes of flight without making the jet very nose heavy. The T7A gets 4 out of 5 points in the flight time section. The T7 is maneuverable within the runway corridor, 4400 batteries allow it to be less nose heavy, taking off and landing is challenging but fun, and it's got enough thrust to do generally anything you want. Plus, stall recovery is really easy too. In terms of agility, the T7A receives a 5 out of 5. The fit and overall finish of the T7A are what we'll look at next. Freewing set the bar for decals being decals and not stickers with the color of the plane's paint as a background for the graphics. Stickers are objectively worse than decals. Stickers are more likely to peel up and look terrible, and in general, they cover up the molded panel lines and rivets that the manufacturer puts into the mold that they paid tons of money for. Stickers suck. In this section, the T7A gets a 4 out of 5. In total, the T7A receives a 16 out of 20, or, under our old John's gut feeling turned into a score system, a solid 8 out of 10. The wheels can be upgraded if you don't like hard plastic, and the gear initializer issue can be bypassed by running the gear doors directly to the receiver. So please, XFly, get this fixed as soon as possible and make new versions of the jet initialize the gear doors upon contact with the receiver regardless of whether the gear were extended when the plane was powered on. Stickers are doo-doo, and you're not gonna change my mind and make me think that they're awesome. They cover up the intricate foam details and just don't look anywhere near as good as proper decals do. If you want more agility, a 4400 SMC pack is my recommendation, but you can use the Turnigy 5200 battery that Hobby King sent me and go a little nose heavier for an extra 30 seconds of flight. It's a solid trade-off for those of you who care more about flight time instead of crazier aerobatics. In all, it's a fantastic representation of the newest Air Force trainer jet, and I think you'll enjoy it. You can pick up the T7A from Hobby King in the description, but we don't work with them in an affiliate yeah, arrangement. They did send the jet for us to demo, and we wanted to say thanks for sending over such a gorgeous model for us to really put through its paces. I loved this one so much that I flew it no less than 16 times, each time finding something new that it could do and seeing more potential in it than I had originally anticipated. That is where I have the most fun in this hobby. Something that flies out of the box, good, is great, but something that's easy to modify into an even better airplane is one of my passions for RC aviation and one of the core missions of this channel. Let us know what you think about this new review format in the comments, and consider hopping on Discord to chat with the Two Brothers team in real time. If you've got questions, we've got answers. Big congrats to my man Air Guardian and YouTube for winning the monthly Discord server banner contest. Submit your best radio-controlled photograph for a chance to win Two Brothers merchandise. Repeat winners even get a free t-shirt on us. See you guys next time.